Hi there. In this video, we're going to be going through the second part of the proof of the Gauss-Markov theorem in matrix form. And remember, at the end of the last video, we got this expression for the expectation of beta tilde, where beta tilde was this sort of estimator which we've written up here. This sort of first part of it was just what we had from least squares, and we sort of added an extra bit onto that estimator. Right, and we could write this another way. Because I've got y in both of these terms here, I can just write this as some sort of matrix C times Y, where C is X primed X to the power minus one times X primed plus D. Okay, so we got this expression for the expectation of beta tilde. It was equal to the population parameter beta plus DX times beta, where in get deriving this, we've assumed that we've got zero conditional mean of errors. Okay, so it's quite easy to see the conditions under which beta tilde will in fact be unbiased. It will be unbiased if this second term here is equal to zero. Well, because beta is a vector of coefficients, it won't in general be zero. So we've got to have that dx has got to be equal to zero in order for our estimator or the expectation of our estimator to be equal to the population parameter. OK, so we've got the conditions under which our new estimator beta tilde is in fact unbiased. Now what we have to do is we have to prove, uh, we have to find an expression for the variance of our estimated beta tilde. And in doing so, we're going to make use of a few sort of general matrix results. One of them is that the variance of any matrix A times a sort of stochastic matrix X, well that's just equal to the matrix A times the variance of X times A Primed, where A primed is the transpose of A. So we're going to make use of that result. Another result we're going to make use of is the fact that AB, or the product of two matrices AB, if I find the transpose of that product, well, that's just actually equal to B transpose times A transpose. So when I apply the transpose operator to a product, it actually reverses in terms of the order of multiplication. And the final result we're going to make use of is that any matrix A to the power sort of minus one, if I find the transpose of that particular matrix, well, it turns out that that's exactly the same as A transpose to the power minus one. So the order in which I apply the inverse operator and the transpose operator is unimportant in matrix multiplication or matrix algebra rather. Okay, so if I sort of use our form, which we've got up here for beta tilde, which is beta tilde, is equal to c times y, then I can make use of this first expression here and write that the variance of beta tilde is just equal to our matrix C times the variance of y times C transposed. And if we have assumed that we've got homoscedastic errors, well, under that assumption, we then have that the variance of our dependent variable y is just equal to sigma squared, some sort of constant, times i. If we have this assumption being true, then we can just write out our variance as this. So we're just going to have our variance being equal to c times sigma squared, which is just a constant, times the identity matrix i times c primed. And the identity matrix i times c primed just yields c primed. And because c, uh, sigma squared is a constant, I can just write this as sigma squared times the matrix c times its transpose. Okay, so at this point it becomes quite prudent to write out actually what the form of our matrix C is. So our matrix C is just equal to x primed x to the power minus 1 times x primed y, oh sorry, not times y, plus d. Yeah, so that's our, our matrix C because then when I apply that operator or this matrix C to y, I just get what I, I have up here for beta tilde. So when I take the transpose of C, what's going to happen? Well, if I sort of apply it to each bit in turn, because I can do because it's a linear operator, then the idea is that this whole sort of first term here is one big product. And when we have the product of two matrices or a number of matrices, the order of multiplication uh, actually becomes inverted under the transpose operator. So Actually, we're going to have this matrix X, um, X primed, coming out the front, but it's not going to be X primed after we've transposed it. It's just going to be X. 
And then when I sort of apply the transpose operator to this product here, right, which is going to come after this X, well, then it's one thing to notice that when I apply it, it doesn't matter the order in which I apply it in terms of the inverse operator. It just sort of passes straight through that. So I can just think about X primed X on its own. And the idea here is that the order is going to inverse, so it's going to be inverse when I take the transpose. So this X prime is going to go up to the front, but I'm going to take the transpose of that, so that's just going to be X. And this X, X on its own here is going to go out to the front here, so that I'm, but I'm going to transpose it, so I'm just going to be left with X prime X to the power minus 1. In other words, exactly what I had before. So I've got X times X prime X to the power minus 1 plus just D transpose. Okay, so now we're in a position where we're sort of part of the way to finding the variance of beta tilde. In the next video, we're going to go ahead and find the variance of beta tilde, and we're going to compare it with what we got from least squares. I'll see you then.